right now, how many people around you would say, I know that in a crisis, I could count on you to be there for whatever it took and however long it took. The Bible says two are better than one. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who has no one to help him. The Bible tells us that wise friends are a gift of God. And what is a characteristic of a friend? Look at the next verse. Friends love through all kinds of weather. Now in this series, we're gonna look at for four weeks, helping friends through tough times. We're gonna talk about four common crises that people have all around you all the time. Divorce, debt, depression, and death. And we're gonna talk about how, next week we're gonna look at how do you help a friend going through a financial crisis? You know anybody like that? Like everybody? And, and next week we're gonna talk about the practical uh, factors of financial freedom and how to survive and thrive in an economic downturn, which will be fun because on Tuesday I'm actually flying up to San Francisco where I'm the keynote speaker for the American Bankers Association. <laughs> 5,000 bankers. So I have a few words to say to them about the economy. Uh, but uh, when I come back next weekend, we're gonna be talking about personal finance and how do you help a friend through a difficult time of debt and uh, maybe they've gotten laid off and, and things like that. Then we're gonna look the following week at how do you help a friend through depression? When they're discouraged, when they're down, when they're defeated, they feel like giving up, how do you help a friend in a tough time? And the fourth week, we're gonna look at how do you help someone who's dying? when a friend is dying. You're going to have in your lifetime many friends pass away. How do you help a friend who is dying and what do you say to them in that time? This week, I want us to look at divorce. When a marriage has ended. You know, in the 1960s, in 1967, there were a couple of very well-known psychiatrists who did a, a, a study that is now quite famous trying to correlate the connection between stress and illness and they were trying to find out if there really was a connection between severe stress in your life and major illness. Thomas Holmes, Richard Rock conducted this study of 5,000 medical patients, and as a result, they developed a scale of 43 common stressful events. And uh, these are things that people go through in life, and they gave them numbers based on this study from one to 100, one being no stress, and 100 being uh, you know, the most stressful thing you could do in life. And they discovered that anybody with over 300 points of stress was at risk of developing a major illness during that year. Now, what was interesting to me was that the most stressful event in life, they concluded, is the death of a spouse. That is the most stressful thing you can experience in life, the death of a spouse. It gets a, a rating of 100, and many of you have gone through that. Then the second most stressful event is a divorce from a spouse and that got a 73. The third most stressful event in life is a separation from a spouse, which got 65 points, which was interesting to me that either by death or by divorce, the end of a marriage is about the most painful thing you can go through in life. Now this weekend, we're not gonna look at how to prevent a divorce. That's another message. But I wanna talk about how do you help a friend who's going through one right now? or has just come out of one? And how do you help a person who, maybe they fought the divorce, they didn't want it, but how do you help them through that time? 